We're now going to uh, test our buffer solution again, this time with a base, sodium hydroxide. Um, I'm actually going to first make our uh, buffer solution as I did before. So I wanna first share the pH that we're reading for water. So the top one will be our beaker that will have the buffer solution at pH one. And it's at about 6.69. And our other one, which will have just water in it is pH meter two. It has a pH of about 6.15. This highlights the very like the difference in each of the probes and that they're not perfectly accurate. Um, but also it's going to give you a starting point. So we're at a pH above uh, 6.5 at least for water or about there. And I'm going to now blow carbon dioxide into our buffer solution until we hit a pH of about 5.8 again. And then I will add 0.2 grams of sodium bicarbonate as we did previously. Uh, and I will pause here and resume this, this video once we actually have our buffer solution made. Okay, I've been uh, blowing carbon dioxide into my water for my buffer solution for a while. And now you can see that I have a pH of 5.89. And the pH of my water in my plain water has been slowly drifting. It's now 6.4, it was 6.2 for a long time. Um, I'm now going to add my sodium bicarbonate to my buffer solution. And I'm gonna add 0.2 grams once again. Um, and so we'll return once we have completed preparing the solution. So I'm gonna use the scale to weigh out 0.2 grams. It's already here, great. So two or 0 0.237 grams. I'm just going to use the straw to stir this up. And now that we're adding our, our weak base, the conjugate um, base of our weak acid, we should see our pH increase now that we have both an acid and a base present in solution. I might take a minute to settle down from our stirring. You can see we've got a pH now of about 7.5 um, and our water's at about 6.5. So what we're gonna do for uh, this experiment is we're going to add a base this time. We're going to be adding um, sodium hydroxide. Which is a strong base. And similar to the previous experiment, we're just going to go two drops at a time and see what happens. So I'm going to add two drops to my water. We're starting at a pH of 6.5 and 7.5. And I'll stir. So we can see that the pH of the water immediately rose all the way up to over 10. That's a pretty big jump. That's a change in pH of about four, whereas our buffer solution only changed by about a pH of one. This is still a larger change than we saw with our acid. And we, we I'm putting in another two drops. See that some buffer systems are better equipped to handle changes in acid versus a base. Now our buffer solution has a pH of 7.22 and our water has a solution of almost 12. It's 11.95. I'll add another two drops of base to each. And stir. Okay. 
We have a pH for our buffer solution of 9.5 and 12.24 for our water. Adding another two drops of sodium hydroxide to each. See less of a change this time. Our buffer solution is now at 9.77 and our water solution is at 12.40. I've added another two drops to each beaker. We have a pH of our buffer solution of 9.92 and a pH of our water of 12.48. You see that water is changing very slowly now after its initial large change. I've added two drops to each beaker, probably two and a half to the water on accident. We now have a pH of 10.07 for our buffer and 12.59 for our water. Now this is how long it's taken our buffer to get to a pH of 10 when that was what happened after just two drops to our water. <clears throat> I've added another two drops of our base to each. And we can see we have a pH of 10.19 for our buffer and 12.66 for our water. <clears throat> Added two more drops. We have a pH of 10.29 for our buffer solution and a pH of 12.73 for our water. I've added two more drops. We have a pH of 10.40 and for our buffer solution and a pH of 12.78 for our water. We've had two more drops to each. We have a pH of 10.49 for our buffer solution and 12.82 for our water. Few more drops of sodium hydroxide added to each beaker. See a 10.57 pH for our buffer and a 12.86 pH for our water. We have a pH of 10.66 for our buffer solution and a pH of 12.90 for our water. Okay, now we have a pH of 10.75 for our buffer solution and a pH of 12.93 for our water. At this point, let's just find out how many more drops it takes to get our buffer solution to a pH of over 12. So I'm just gonna add drops and stir. Right now we're at uh, 10.75, one, two. 
three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16. So it took 16 drops to get our pH up to 12. 17, 18. 19, 20. 21, 22. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So after about 30 drops, we got close to where we were with our water. Um, and we didn't see that same uh, big jump that we saw with our acid. We didn't see that buffer capacity clearly um, created, or sorry, clearly broken um, or reached when we added our base. Now, just by way of a test, I've got our indicator solution uh, right here. That was our butterfly pea flower tea. I'm gonna add it to the water. And look, we get that lovely greenish color that we saw. It's like green blue. Maybe it's not super lovely. It's kind of gross. Uh, let me show you what it looks like with a white paper underneath it to kind of try to highlight the difference between these two. Okay, You might be able to see the color a little bit better if I take away this tablet. There, I think that's a little bit easier to see. It's a very light green color compared to the blue that we started with with our neutral water. 